<coughs> good morning everyone and uh, today this lecture about cystosomiasis is about uh, is a part two or a continuation of the previous lecture and this one is about the diagnosis treatment as well as the prevention of cystosomiasis so let me make this thing clear like in the previous lecture what we have discussed is like different types of cystosomiasis which are there like hematobium japonicum and mansoni and in this one we are going to discuss like how they are diagnosed and uh, like in previous lecture we discussed about the life cycle about uh, the distribution prevalence of this condition and of course like uh, this one uh, uh, this time we are going to discuss about the diagnosis treatment as well as the prevention so <clears throat> talking about the diagnosis guys um, I'm going to include one photo here which is taken from a book of parasitology so you can see like uh, the most important aspect of making the diagnosis of schistosoma hematobium is number one uh, remember like uh, diagnosis is not like this that you have to remember the name of the lab test rather it's about taking history doing examination and then confirming your diagnosis by lab investigations so the most important aspect of making the diagnosis of schistosoma hematobium is to appreciate the risk of exposure For example, if we will talk about Schistosoma hematobium, so as we know, it lives around the venous plexus around the bladder. So, of course, like in the history and the physical examination, what you will found is you are going to found maybe the history of hematuria, or maybe specifically you are going to found a history of travel to the. Uh, areas which are high risk of getting schistosoma hematobium infections and of course like when you're taking history and someone have visited those areas someone one of the important aspect is to establish not just visiting those areas but rather what were their activities for example if someone was exposed to fresh waters activities so <laughs> of course like on the history we are going to check all these things and then we will go for the examination and an examination maybe like depending on the stage of the patient maybe you are going to find a swimmer's edge maybe you are going to find hepatomegaly maybe you are found going to find uh, splenomegaly things like this so majority of the cases of schistosoma hematobium are basically diagnosed by finding eggs in the urine or the feces we they use some methods called as concentration methods they are helpful in increasing the sensitivity of urinary testing Sometimes they use techniques called as sedimentation or membrane filtration techniques when they analyze the urine for schistosoma hematobium. Uh, there is something called as uh, cystoscopy. Cystoscopy is like they are going to put a scope inside the bladder and they are going to see. That is really required. But that's helpful in recovering the parasite eggs. 
So, how the X of schistosoma hematobium looks like, they are spindle shaped, as I showed you in the previous lecture, and uh, they have a terminal spine, and uh, they then stain them, they use some specific staining to stain them, to identify them. Now, as we know that, you know, these eggs can penetrate the host tissue and can stay there for a number of years, sometimes even giving effective therapy. Because of this, you know, uh, sometimes uh, what you can say, egg viability testing with special type of staining is sometimes is necessary to establish a diagnosis but or to establish like a presence of the active infection but like rarely done. Serological testings are also done. They are sensitive but they are not very specific due to interparasite antibodies which can persist even the infection is resolved. So the specificity is too low for these tests. So that's why they are really used in the diagnosis like in the areas where there is endemic. Imagings are used like ultrasounds are used to see for obstructive uropathy, bladder wall thickening or to see the granulomas, calcifications, hydrouretor, hydronephrosis, nephrosis, which we had discussed in the previous uh, uh, previous lecture, right? So, when it comes to the diagnosis, again, like uh, uh, not just you can say uh, this uh, hematobium or schistosoma hematobium. Uh, rather uh, like uh, the rest of the schistosoma mansoni and japonicum they have the same uh, what you can say uh, diagnostic tests available okay by which we diagnose them uh, for example <laughs> for example when it comes to the mansoni, we can also do egg viability testing. In that one, you know, one of the thing which we are going to do is the stool testing as well. Um, like we will take the stool of the patient. These are the eggs, you know, hematobium with spindle at one of the end. So. In that one, of course, we are going to add the stool testing. We can check the stools like feces for blood. We can do liver function tests as well. And we can do serological tests as well as imaging can be done as well. And the same thing with schistosoma uh, japonicum, uh, like which will be same like uh, what you can say schistosoma mansoni uh, like we can do uh, all these testings concentration techniques you can you can do direct stool examination you can take the urine for examination but of course like the urine like these the japonicum and mansoni they are present in stools so you can say you can take their stool your stu uh, their feces and uh, you can see it under the microscope. You can see how their egg looks like. Here is the typical feature like of Japonicum, how their eggs look like. Okay. They are ovoid in shape. They have a small knob near the pole. This one has spindle. This one have a typical look. So all of them, they have a typical look. So they have like a different appearance. So we can do the stool examination. 
So remember, like in this one, we are going to talk about urine more, but in these two, we are going to talk about stools more. And again, like they use the concentration techniques to process large stool volume. Of course, look, you cannot see the all uh, stool. Of course, the volume is too high. So there is something called as concentration techniques by which we can take a small amount of stool, but that is concentrated one. Uh, for example, there is a technique called as formaldehyde ether concentration technique. There is one more technique called as methylate iodine formal high formaldehyde concentration technique. Especially when the infection is very 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 light, you know. So of course, like there will be not too much eggs in the stool. In that case, we can do one thing called as rectal biopsy. So in rectal biopsy, what they do, like of course. Uh, if someone they are highly suspecting that they have this infection but they are keep on doing repeated stool examinations and still they are coming back as negative so of course if your clinical suspicions are very high so then they can do a rectal biopsy and they can take or even they can do a liver biopsy so liver biopsy of course like liver can show the worms can show the eggs and all these things and now, talking about the immunological testings, which are this one, detection of the antigens or antibody or intradernal skin test. <coughs> so, <clears throat> currently, different tests which are available, they are written over here, like ELISA, you all know, right? Circulating anodic antigen CAA or circulating cathodic antigen by ELISA, complement fixation test or bentonite fluctuation test, indirect hemagglutination or IgA or immunofluorescence technique or ELISA or ATEB enzyme linked immunoelectrotransfer blot. So I will talk about this one, what is intradermal test. So immunological testings are also available of course, okay. So uh, Currently available test, you know, COPT, COPT is called as circum oval precipitant test or this IHT test, IHA, sorry, indirect hemagglutinin mm -hmm. test or ELISA. Of course, like all these are to detect the antigens or the antibodies. So nowadays, you know, they are, you can say, they are doing more of this testing, <coughs> ELISA, to direct the active infection. So, what they've found is like, of course, like the antigens, they are circulating in the blood. So, uh, so, there is something called as gut-associated antigens, which are circulating like cathodic antigen CAA and the CAA is particularly useful because the antigen can this antigen can be detected in the urine as well so we can take the urine and we can run ELISA and we can find CAA in them we can do liver ultrasound we can do CT scan of the liver okay all this test so uh, now, uh, one of the thing which uh, I want to talk about is, uh, so you, we can detect, you know, antigens as well as antibodies, right? And these are all the tests, you know, which are done. Okay, this test, which is called as fearless test, okay, or it's, it's an interdermal skin test, you know. Uh, now, what they do, they, they take the antigen from the larva, okay, and then what they do is like they put them intradermally and they see the reaction. So of course, like if someone is giving the like redness or induration on the skin that you know that, that they can come back as positive. So they say like they are positive. So this is like, but like the important thing is, uh, of course, like this will be specific for one of the schizosome, not for all. So 
these are all the testing measures which are available simply to detect the infection with schistosome. So, <clears throat> ELISA is the most favored one for to make the diagnosis. It is going to detect the antigen. So, okay, how we treat these patients now? That one, that thing is important. Rather, very, very, very important. So, how we treat now? I will start with schistosoma hematobium. Like, of course, the treatment is somehow same in all of them. But talking like letting like talking uh, starting with schistosoma hematobium, and then again I will talk about Mancini, and then again I will talk about Japonicum. So once the diagnosis is done, now uh, I'm going to add one more slide over here. Or okay, I will add over here. Rather, I'm going to change the name treatment. Because like here, you know, just the drug treatment is written, guys. But remember, it is not only the drug treatment. Rather, we have to treat all the other conditions. So now, what is the first thing which the how the patient present with? They present with swimmer's itch, right? So how we can treat swimmer's itch? Of course, like we can provide them with some um, topical uh, ointment, you know, of course, like which is going to decrease their pruritus, okay? things like this now uh, basically the focus of uh, of the treatment in these infection is to control the inflammation first so first we give some drug to control the inflammation and then we start with specific anti-parasitic therapy because I told you that whenever we uh, tr uh, start killing the parasite of course like they give more intense type of reaction of course the drug of choice is Preziquental which is written over here it is anti schistosomal drug now to completely eradicate this infection it may be necessary to provide the treatment with this drug around multiple times you can say once now and once later so what we do is like we give them this drug in a single dose or sometimes in two divided doses uh, and that's why you know like uh, Prezequental it comes in a 600 milligram pill which is breakable in the middle when you will see that pill you know it have a small Intentation in the middle like to break it and uh, we give it once and then after two to three months you know we uh, repeat one more dose it have a lot of side effects like it can cause uh, abdominal discomfort headache dizziness things like this now as I told you that you know these patients when we they get presequential what happens is they show more inflammatory response so we give them anti-inflammatory drugs with antihistamine drugs so what we will give them anti-histamine drugs and anti-inflammatory drugs or you can say corticosteroids guys to know this uh, mechanism of action of corticosteroids their side effects is very 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 important okay there is one more drug which is called as metrifonate it is an alternative choice this is the drug of choice so metrifonate metrifonate is an alternative choice which can be given to the patients so this is how we treat the patients with infections. <coughs> now, if we will talk about the treatment of schistosoma mancini, 
again the treatment is supportive as well as controlling the symptoms in acute schistosomiasis for example in acute schistosomiasis if they have too much inflammatory reaction give corticosteroids we can you can give prednisolone now when it comes to chronic schistosomiasis i'm talking about mancini the first goal is to cure the disease and the so second goal is to limit transmission of the parasite within that area Prezzyquintel remains the drug of the choice. Prezzyquintel is active against all the schistosomas species. Guys, remember this thing. Okay. So, many of the times, you know, the mancini and malaria, it, it comes together. So, sometimes, you know, they prefer to give prezzyquintel with anti-malaria drugs. But again, like, if you don't remember this thing, that's fine. So, again, Prezzyquintel can cause inflammatory response, so you will give corticosteroids as well. Now, uh, and again, we give them in a single dose or a divided dose with uh, one more repeat of dosages, like after six to eight weeks. One more drug is available to treat these patients called as Oxa mini queen. It comes by the name of Vensel. It's also an anti schistosomal agent. Okay, but remember this one Prezzyquintel is a drug of choice. So, uh, and of course, like depending on like either the patient have CNS condition or all this condition you are going to talk about or uh, supportively or symptomatically treat those things as well. <laughs> and if I will talk about the Japonicum again, guys, Prezzyquintel is the mainstay of treatment. And uh, simply, uh, we can give them one dose or a two divide or three divided dosages and uh, uh, like uh, once we give this thing, of course, like, they do give a, a good response. There are other drugs for this one as well, but uh, again, Prezzyquintel is a very, very, very important drug simply because it have a good, uh, you can say, uh, action or anti-schistosomal action, or it is effective against all the schistosomal uh, species. So that's why once anyone have this thing we we give them this thing so so see new discovery of a discussable activity of rc method i told you anti-malarial drugs they can give and this is like the details of that like not important r3 method you know in malaria prone areas how we can prevent this condition a lot of things they are needed a lot of things should be done so see they are showing you a woman working in a rice paddy field i don't know like it's rice paddy field or what but like she's working in water and this one or this one or they're showing again like a snail rich water a pond at the end of a canal close to a village this is one from oman scooping for aquatic snails again sudan there is a village where 70 percent of the people excrete schistosoma mancini eggs and africa where the animals can be affected with schistosoma bovis as well. Now, schistosoma bovis, of course, we did not discuss that because that one is not important. Um, so, now, uh, guys, you know, this is photograph from China. Humans and bovines and other domestic animals harbor the same parasite, schistosoma japonicum. And that's the reason, like, many of the places, you know, uh, when you see the life cycle, they show you uh, both the cows with the uh, humans 
So, <coughs> WHO basically established a goal to treat 75% of the school age children with infection and at risk of morbidity by 2010. And what when we say morbidity, it is particularly associated with schistosoma hematobium infection, is hepatosplenomegaly, bladder deformities, and hydronephrosis. So remember, schistosoma hematobium, it causes renal problems, okay? Of course, whenever there is hematuria, sometimes we need some endoscopic or surgical intervention to treat urinary obstruction, bladder cancer, CNS disease, and all those things. Every year, you know, like many people, they die due to schistosoma infections, around 150,000 people. But still, there is no form of profile access for patients with risk of exposure. What is profile access? When we give certain medication to anyone to avoid that condition, we call it as prophylactic treatment. So, of course, it is very important to avoid fresh immersion or any fresh water in contaminated areas because the transmission is high in that area, like in ponds, in lakes, in rivers, in streams. I'm talking about endemic areas. A very good way is to heat the bathing, like the water which you use for showering, for at least five minutes at 100 50 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. Or one, of course, like it's not possible to heat the water in every area, but what is the way in areas which are very poor? They say, like, you can take the water and let it stand in any tub or anywhere where you are sure, like, there is no snails for three days and after three days you can use that so you will be free of the rest and of course like you know health education is important sanitation is important socioeconomic development is important to control these areas so <coughs> there are many countries which have attain a good control of schistosomiasis like uh, Schistosoma, Mancini, countries like Brazil, Venezuela, Cambodia, China, Egypt, Philippines, you know, all this one, they really control this condition in a very, very good way. Uh, they really uh, decrease the transmission and there are, what you can say, they, 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 they run a lot of programs like uh, they give chemotherapy to their people, they supply them with safe, water clean water they supply them with washing and swimming facilities they educate them they improve the sanitations uh, they reduce the local water contamination by these eggs they control the snails and all the people who travel to those areas and the immigrants they they always educate them so they really did good job, you know, in controlling this thing, these infections. And Japonicum, which is uh, basically a disease endemic in, uh, you can say, China and South Asia. Uh, like China did a very good job in controlling these things, by the way. So what they do, like, you know, the host snail in Japonicum is, as I told you, is Oncomelania. So they try to eliminate these snails. They, tr they eliminate their breeding sites. They, they use chemicals to kill these snails. They improve the sanitations. And uh, some of the people who work in the fields where, where like, the chances are high, they give them prophylactic medications as well. They give them protective uh, clothing to work in those fields. And uh, like that's how they, they control uh, this condition. So that's all about schistosoma guys. And that's all uh, we have to cover this week. So 
I'm going to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening.